These are the wounded, sick, and injured of the Navy. They are being taken from wherever they were hurt or fell sick to naval hospitals where they will get the best possible medical care. These men are suffering with everything, from wounds and burns received in battle to broken ankles from falling off a ladder of cleaning windows. Some are sick from physical causes, like heart trouble or pneumonia. Others are just as sick from mental causes, the NP or neuropsychiatric patients. All sick people require treatment. But right now, you are chiefly interested in the treatment of the mentally ill. These men are being admitted to the NP ward. For the most part, they appear more or less normal. But if you look carefully, you will notice that some of them show definite signs of their illness. These patients are really sick. Otherwise, the doctors would have never sent them to the hospital. As hospital corpsman, you will help in the treatment of many types of mental illness. And each one requires a different approach. Let's have your wristwatch and wallet, because we're going to give you a shower. I lost my portable radio already. Well, all your stuff will be put in this bag, which is numbered, and then kept in a safe locker. Everything you leave with us is listed right down here, so we have a complete record. But what about that radio? Oh, well, I'll make a note of that right now, and I'll have the chief send out a tracer on it. And now, Miller, let's get that uniform off. A shower will feel good after three days in the train. Treatment of an NP patient begins from the moment he arrives in the admitting room. Everything that is done for him makes him feel that the people in the hospital are friendly and want to help. Your manner, approach, and the way you handle NP patients is of great importance. Remember, they are more sensitive than those who are physically ill. Right this way. These are the papers on Miller, sir. Thank you. That's all. Have a chair. Your name is Miller? How are you feeling, Miller? Terrible. I didn't sleep for three days. Well, we'll try and help you get some sleep here. This man looks dazed and slowed down, a condition which can develop either in boot camp or in combat. You've been in the dumps too, but you've always managed to snap out of it, because that's normal. Uh, this man can't without help any more than he could set his arm if it were broken or take out his own appendix. A smart corpsman can give him that help and start him on the way to recovery. How about him, child? Oh, it looks pretty good to me. I shouldn't be here. I should be back with the ship. I have no business here. You know, Miller, the quickest way to get back to the boys is by eating your chow. Tastes good. Here. Try one. Come on, try one. Tastes good, doesn't it? Try some milk now. I gotta get back to the ship. Sure, but the milk will taste good with those spuds. This corpsman is doing a darn good job. He is firm but kind so as not to irritate the patient. The next time it will be easier for both of them, and the patient has made another step to recovery. While Miller's having his first square meal in days, let's get a few things straight about NP patients. 
First of all, the patient is never fatty or nuts. He is sick and must be treated as such. Take Miller. He isn't stubborn or unreasonable because he doesn't want to eat. That's just a symptom of his particular illness and the corpsman used the right approach. Not all NP patients will be the same. There are many different types of mental illness and we are going to show you a few you will be seeing most. Some will be slowed down like Miller. Others tense and on edge like cases of psychoneurosis or combat fatigue. You will see the unreliable psychopath the very depressed suicidal patient and the catatonic. Some may be mixed up and excited, others overactive with more energy than they can use. In each case, the symptoms will be different and all require different treatment. It is the corpsman rather than the doctor who will be with the patient most of the time. And for that reason, the corpsman must know his patients, watch their behavior and report anything unusual. The corpsman is the eyes and ears of the doctor. Here's what I mean. How did Harris get along last night? I'm afraid he didn't get much sleep, even with the sodium amytol you prescribed. He seems awfully restless and confused this morning. Mm, better have him see me the first thing after sick call. How's Miller today? Oh, he's getting along fine, sir. He ate everything we gave him and wanted more. Uh, information about the patient's behavior is being given to the doctor so he can follow the case closely. Take Miller, for instance. The doctor is now ordering him a needle shower and spray in hydrotherapy as part of his treatment. Step back a little, will you, Miller? There is another type of patient you will see, and probably quite a few. Some will be in hospitals, but most will be treated in naval convalescent centers. This type of patient may not seem particularly sick to you, but he may be a psychopath, a case of psychoneurosis or combat fatigue. This kind of patient is usually tense, nervous, jittery, and often makes a tough problem to manage. Take combat fatigue, for example. Get up, Mac, get up. What the hell do you think you're doing? You're supposed to hit the deck with the others. I'm here to see that you do. What's the trouble? This jerk's trying to get me up. You know I can't sleep nights, and when I finally do fall asleep, he tries to push me out, for God's sake. Oh, take it easy, fella. Al here is new. He won't do it again. But don't forget, you're still in the service, and we've got rules here whether we like them or not. Besides, you're going to get well a lot quicker if you follow the gang. Now get out there with your mates. You've missed breakfast already. I don't see why we have to baby these gold bricks. He's no gold brick. He won a unit citation. You don't have to baby them. Just use your head. Now watch this. That may help. Time to get up, Ed. Ed, time to get up. What's the matter? Why, everybody's up and out. You've missed breakfast. Oh, nuts. If you hurry, you can get a cup of coffee. Maybe you've got something there. They probably couldn't sleep last night. Lots of things that patients do here seem like plain gold bricking and belly aching, but they're not. They're symptoms of whatever they've got. They may act nasty and insulting at times, but just keep your sense of humor. And don't forget that if you get tough with them, they'll make your job that much harder. And I guess you're right. Same goes for the psychopath. He can be a real troublemaker and requires plenty of watching. I nearly got fooled by one yesterday. Hello, Bob. Check me out, will you? Why, sure. Have you got your liberty pass? Well, uh, Dr. Adams said he'd have someone leave it for me at the main gate. I just saw him. He said it'd be all right? Sure. Till six tonight. Hey, I'll get to see a double-headed today. Just a minute, fella. I'd better check with Dr. Adams. Oh, well, Dr. Adams won't be in his... Hello, Dr. Adams. Why, this is Davis in Ward 7, sir. D uh, did you tell Kern he could leave the hospital today, sir? I see. Aye, aye, sir. Sorry, Dr. Adams says no. I don't understand it. I just left him. Ah, who the hell does he think he is anyway? Well, that patient was a pretty good liar, but a little childish when he was caught. 
You've probably seen psychopaths just like that, outside of hospitals, too, because there are lots of them, and lying is only one of their symptoms. One of the most important parts of the corpsman's work is the protection of patients, sometimes from others and sometimes from themselves. If the patient is depressed enough, he may even attempt suicide. That is why he may be put in a room with a special watch, not for punishment, but for protection. No use, no use going on. I ought to be dead. Oh my God, no use no. Is there anything I can do for you? Oh my God, no. nothing anybody can do for me. I don't rate it. I don't rate anything in the whole world. Well, is there anything I can get for you? No. I wouldn't like my mother's picture that I brought her with me. Well, all right, then I'll get it for you right away. Oh, I... Robert's up on F6, said he has his mother's picture in his gear. You want to look it up for me, please? Sure. He wants the picture pretty bad. Poor kid, feels about as low as he can. Hope this picture helps him some. Roberts? Isn't he the one we're supposed to keep an eye on? Yeah, that's the guy. Is he alone now? Uh, I suppose so. I just come down here for a minute. Yeah, but it might be the wrong minute. He could kill himself in that minute. That man is supposed to get a shock treatment this morning, and he has a darn good chance of getting well. Oh, he probably wants his mother's picture, all right. But he might want this glass, too. And broken glass can be awful sharp. You better get back up there on a the double. OK. When men are sick and depressed like Roberts, you've got to be on a constant lookout for anything they could use to hurt themselves glass in any form, medicine bottles, eyeglasses, or anything that will make a sharp edge. Remove all belts, neckerchiefs, scarves. Watch out for knives, razor blades, or anything that will cut. You may never see a patient as depressed as that, but if you do, remember Roberts and his mother's picture. Fortunately for him, there are several ways of treating his condition. One of the most successful is the electroshock treatment. Oh. <laughs> Oh, my God. I can't. I don't. No, you This will help you to get well. Nothing will help me to get well. Oh, my God. Ready? Kind of hot pushing that thing around, isn't it? Well, not too bad. The exercise feels good. How are the treatments going along? Well, I'm through with them. I had six, and the doctor says I don't need any more. Guess I was pretty sick when I started taking those treatments. I, I don't even remember. Well, it's good to see you looking so well. It's things like that that give you a kick out of working around an NP ward. To know you help that man recover makes you feel good. Of course, not all patients will recover so rapidly. A lot of them may take weeks or even months. So don't get impatient. Another type of patient you may help treat is the catatonic. He may stay like this for hours or days without moving, eating, or even speaking. But he hears and understands everything. Harris, we're going to see the doctor now. Okay, Harris, we're 
just going down the hall. Is that seven and a half grain? Yes, sir. Take it easy, Harris. The doctor wants to talk to you. Sodium Anatol, please. It's all right, Harris. This will make you feel better. This medicine will help you to relax so that you can talk to us. All you feel is the prick of the needle. Trying to get off. I want you to talk to us, Harris. We want to help you, but you won't tell us what's wrong. You know we want to help you to get well, don't you? I know everything happening here. That's fine. Then tell us what's worrying you and why you can't talk. They tell me not to. Who tells you not to? The voices. But you see, you can talk. I guess I can. About these voices, when do you hear them? Mostly at night, just as I go to bed. Are they male or female voices? Male. It's one that keeps threatening me. Starting with this treatment and helped by various others, the patient will continue to get better, sometimes in a matter of weeks. Well, how's everything today, Harris? Okay. Got a light? Sure. Was I really nuts when they brought me here? Well, what do you think? Guess I was pretty sick. Yes, you were. Plenty sick. It must be nice to feel like yourself again. Sure is. When do you think I could go downtown to see a football game? Well, I don't know. But I'll talk to the doctor about it today. Swell, thanks. The corpsman played a large part in the recovery of that patient and still does. He was honest and not too optimistic in his answers. You'll get questions all day long from patients. So if you don't know the answer, the safest thing to say is, I don't know, but I'll try and find out. One of the most serious problems on the NP ward is the mixed up patient who becomes excited and assaultive. Good morning, Charlie. Well, go ahead. Go ahead and shoot me. I'm not going to shoot you, Charlie. Oh, yes, you are. You're a policeman, and it's your duty. Come on, let's go. It's time you took a little rest. No, I can't rest. I deserve to be shot. No, you don't, Charlie. Come along. Let's lie down. You've got to shoot me. I'm yellow. No, 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 no. Hey. You've got to shoot me. Oh. Yeah, you bastard. Son of a bitch. I'm dying. That's all right, Charlie. Hey, yeah, open the door, Bill. No matter how tough and unreasonable a patient is, he must never be manhandled. If you are ever in a spot like this, get as much help as you can. Lift the patient off his feet, take off his shoes, and carry him into a strong room. Then call the doctor immediately. Seems to be the trouble, Jones. Don't you want to talk to me about it? Better get him down the hydro for a cold pack. Yes, sir. How do you feel this morning? Not so good. Well, the doctor's ordered a treatment for you again this morning. You'll feel better after you get your treatment. 
Get a good insight down to the foot of the Want to raise your head, Charlie? Sleep now. There is another type of overactive patient, but he is not so mixed up. He has more energy than he can use sensibly and takes careful handling. Like most NP patients, if handled improperly, he will behave improperly. If you forget that he is a patient and you are a corpsman, anything can happen. Say, these aren't the magazines you promised me. Where the hell are they? For about the tenth time, Bennett, I'm telling you, I'll see about them as soon as I possibly can. Now, don't bother me. Now, I'm busy. can be calmed down by a continuous tub in hydrotherapy. How's the temperature running, Jim? It's running about 98 degrees, Chief. Better raise it to 100. The man's been pretty excited this morning. Okay. Now, all his extra horsepower can be used on something constructive and helpful. back into an organized routine where he feels himself a member of the group is another part of your job. Under the supervision of the doctor, occupational therapist, and corpsman, organized activities like these will help most patients recover. time to show you in detail the many things you may be doing as an NP corpsman, but I'd like to include a few. You may help the doctor in the EEG room by taking a record of the patient's brain waves. The corpsman is checking the electrodes before making a record. These tracings often give the doctor valuable information in certain brain disorders. You will be expected to take the patient to the psychologist, where careful tests are given to measure intelligence or test certain skills. You may have to take him across the country on a train, aboard a ship, or in a plane. Under travel conditions, what you have learned becomes more important than ever. There is about five times as much chance for suicide escape, or injury while traveling. Remember, here you're on your own and don't have the protection of the hospital ward to help you. When he gets better, you may have to take him shopping. 
Or you may take several patients to a ball game. Or the theater. Your job may seem tough at times, but men with your special training are needed. And when your shipmates leave the hospital happy and well again, there's a lot of satisfaction in knowing that you've done your part. Here's your wristwatch. Well, thanks. You know, I got a 30-day leave. Glad to be going, eh? Well, you bet. Well, not that you fellas haven't been all right. Thanks. Here's something else that came in yesterday. You must have left it on the train. Say, that's swell. You guys never forget things, do you? This will come in handy on that 30-day leave. Yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks for everything. Sure. Good luck. Be seeing you. Right over.